You have learned a lot about our discrete heroes of product protection, but now you wonder how to properly select them. What should you have in mind when choosing your best allies? Hi everyone, it's nice to be back for a new episode of the Secret Heroes of Personal Care. I am Maria Teresa Fontanianes. I am happy to be here with you to dig further into our subject of the season, product protection. In today's class, we are going to reflect on how to formulate for effective product protection. In other words, how to build a team for our heroes to best accomplish their mission. We can get a great deal of information about the ingredients from the suppliers, but ultimately we want to put them together in a formulation. Therefore, it's important to understand how we can formulate with modern product protection ingredients and how they will behave once in a formulation. We want our ingredients of choice to support effective antimicrobial protection. In modern product protection systems, this is best achieved by using combinations of ingredients, since some of them may be more effective against bacteria while others more against yeast and mold. Examples of such combinations include 1,2-alkandiols with hydroxacetophenone, or phenoxyethanol with 1,2-alkandiols, hydroxacetophenone or tropolon. Many of these combinations are available commercially as ready-to-use blends. It's important to not only make sure that the ingredients complement each other for broad spectrum protection, but also to select the right ingredients based on the particular formulation and the performance we expect from them. For this, we need to understand the characteristics of the ingredients and their compatibility with the formulation as a whole and its components. As I have just mentioned, one key aspect for the selection is the type of formulation. Here, the most important parameter are water solubility and partitioning. Is it a single-phase aqueous formulation, such as a liquid soap? Is it a multi-phase system, such as an emulsion? Or is it a waterless solid, such as dry shampoo? In an emulsion, the ingredients supporting product protection must be present in the aqueous phase, in sufficient quantities for adequate performance. Therefore, while making the emulsion, they should be added to the water phase. While water-soluble ingredients can be added directly to the water phase, non-water-soluble ingredients have to be solubilized in water by dissolving them in a water-miscible solvent prior to addition to the water phase. In a multi-phase system, lipophilic product protection ingredients may shift into the oil phase. What ultimately matters is not only how much ingredient is added, but also how much of it ends up in the aqueous phase. Adding a solubilizer such as short to medium chain alcohol like pentylene glycol may help by altering the partitioning. In emulsions, most multifunctionals can be added in the water phase or at the end of the emulsification process although the former is preferred because some ingredients may influence the emulsion stability, either positively or negatively. In case of the stabilization of the emulsion, possible remedies may include increasing the emulsifier use level or swapping the emulsifier for another kind. In general, compatibility of the ingredient with the formulation is critical. The most obvious symptom of incompatibility is phase separation. For example, phenolic compounds are known to be inactivated by non-ionic emulsifiers, such as polysorbate, while the effectiveness of phenoxyethanol may be reduced by cellulose derivatives. In some cases, especially when the ingredient has amphiphilic properties and may comicalize with the emulsifiers or surfactants, a reduction of viscosity may occur. In such cases, adequate compensation with thickener might be necessary. Things aren't always this complicated for our heroes to team up because, as it happens, some multifunctionals may actually support the formulation. For example, 1,2-alkandiols are well known for their ability to stabilize emulsions, and this property can be exploited by incorporating them before the emulsification process. 1,2-alkandiols may also increase the viscosity of traditional surfactant systems in a certain concentration range. Short-chain 1,2-alkandiols such as pentylene glycol act as solubilizers and medium-chain 1,2-alkandiols such as caprylene glycol can help disperse pigments. Some multifunctionals have the ability to alter the sensorial profile of the formulations and improve the skin feel. One must also ensure the compatibility of the product protection ingredient with certain physical and chemical parameters of the formulation, or rather the formulating and manufacturing process. These include temperature and pH. 
Product protection ingredients have different stability profiles depending on the chemical classes that they belong to. Temperature stability is a particularly important consideration when hot processed is used. While most multifunctionals such as 1,2 alkandiols are stable up to 100 degrees, some ingredients such as esters may not be recommended for high temperatures. In these cases, if such ingredients must be used, they should be added at a stage in the process past the high temperature step, like post-emultification. pH stability is also a function of the chemical makeup of the particular ingredients. Product protection ingredients bearing carboxylic groups, such as organic acids or chelating agents, undergo proton dissociation above a certain pH value, which is detrimental to their antimicrobial efficacy. Organic acids are characterized by their pKa value, which are related to their proton dissociation constants, and show quickly diminishing activity at pHs above their pKa. Chelating agents have an even more delicate pH range, since the acidity or alkalinity of the environment may dramatically influence their metal ion binding capacity and stability. These elements are behind the primary mechanism responsible for the antimicrobial activity. The pH values and changes occurring throughout the formulating and manufacturing process do not only affect ingredients with carboxylic groups. Hydrolytically less stable chemical classes may lose their efficacy below or above neutral pH values due to hydrolysis. That is a transformation of the molecule into something totally different and usually ineffective as an antimicrobial. Esters, for example, have a narrow stable pH range between around 4 to 7. On the other hand, chemical classes with hydrolytically stable bonds can be used in a wide pH range. This includes pH values encountered in processes for the manufacturing of all but the most extreme formulation types, like certain acidifying shampoos, depilatories, hair dyes, and exfoliating creams. Such stable modern product protection ingredient classes include 1,2 alkandiols, ethers, and aromatic alcohols. The use level of the selected ingredients must also be considered, as it influences the performance in the actual formulation. While suppliers usually provide the recommended use levels of their ingredients, we have seen that some factors such as pH and the presence of certain other ingredients can improve or weaken the efficacy. In such instances, the use concentration may be reduced or may have to be increased, respectively. We have a fairly good understanding of the impact of most of these factors known as the hurdle technology. Ultimately, preservative challenge tests performed on the final formulation will tell if the product protection system is adequate. Then final adjustments can be made to the composition. As you have seen, there is a lot to bear in mind when trying to get the most effective product protection. But formulators are not alone to navigate the complex possibilities of modern product protection ingredients. At Simrise, we created HOGO, an online tool that gives access to combinations and dosages of ingredients to support the protection of your formulas. We are done for today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Now, stay tuned for even more information on our heroes of the season. Simrise. Always inspiring more.